internal controls and security measures. Broadly, we'll discuss what, what, what does it mean, control procedures, what is a control system, and how information security is linked, security measures and business continuity planning. So means in good times, we have to think about the bad times. So that's that's very, very important uh, topics. Uh, I can see that uh, if you want to be a CFO, director finance. So as a director finance, CFO, we always think about business continuity, disaster recovery planning. What if someone hack our server, someone hack our system, if system gets down, so what we need to do, these are very, very high level discussions. And obviously we will read some models that will make you perfect in your thinking as a CFO. So this is what I'm going to work on and let's start one by one. Okay, before I explain you what does it controls means. So all of us, we know that there is something called management. So management of resources, financial resources is our responsibility, being a director, budget, director, finance, CFO, reporting to CEOs. We have to make sure that we are having effective and strong controls. That's, uh, that's make sure that our system is aligned. Uh, we are in safe hands. Our server are having a proper backup. If anything happens to them, we have a strong control. Unauthorized people cannot come in our office. No one unauthorized can access the documents because some documents are very sensitive, especially if I think from an auditing point of view. So if there is a good uh, management system, then there is a good, uh, you can say, uh, auditing can everything can bring better results for us. So we will see it from mixed point of view, like auditing, making, putting controls point of view. So every system, every like it's a payroll system, it's accounts payable system, account receivable system, or inventory management system. They all require us to establish standards for operations to be controlled. So first is the standard, because if you don't have a standard you cannot uh, um, get some kind of performance. I will give you an example. Suppose I joined a new company. They didn't tell me what to do, how to do, and uh, how I will be evaluated. Means I don't know my performance criterions. I don't know what is standard for them. So maybe after two months, they ask me, you didn't do, you didn't do a good job. So I will ask them, what is the definition of a good job? means what I do makes you look, I am doing good job. So means that every big, large size organization, uh, they should have standards. And then we do the actual and then we say, oh, yes, this standard is matching or not matching. That is called measuring performance standards against the standards. And of course, if I, I use, you thought I will bring 100 and I bought, I brought 80, so 20 is the uh, variance. So variance analysis is also a very important topic area of interest for the CFOs and CEOs. Actually, they look the C because once we make the budget, we start monitoring the actual and the variance shows us that uh, is there any fault in our planning or is there something out in the market which is not in our controls? So that is called the variance or deviations, it means difference. Deviation is difference or variance. So that is very, very important. We need to look into taking corrective actions. Once we got, so, you know, in software, we have colors like red, green, yellow. So green means everything is fine. Red means something going in uh, the wrong. So the CFO will stately look on the red areas. You know, and these red areas, we will fix it first and then look at the other areas as well. And if required, we will do the reappraising of the standard. Maybe standard was good at time, um, but now it is no more a good time. For example, if you see that COVID has changed all the strategies of the management. So for example, Mushrik Bank. You saw that uh, there is a lot of uh, outsourcing they did. Uh, yeah, here, yeah, no much employees are in UAE. Everyone is online because during the COVID, everyone was working online. So they thought that online model is uh, perfectly okay. And uh, some countries, labor is cheap. And uh, so they are hiring cheap labor and saving 
capital cost, uh, the human resource cost, employee cost. Although I totally um, feel that the quality of uh, employee is the most important, not the price of the employee. And that's how organizations screw themselves. So wrong decisions lead to wrong results as well. But these are, you know, I mean, these are general optimization strategies, um, lower the salaries or find the cheaper employees, sometime at the cost of the uh, business. So uh, it's all subjective and related to the scenario. An evaluation reward system we have to put if in our company we know that if we do something good, suppose you are internal auditor, you save some, you catch some gaps and this causes company a great saving. Uh, you are an accountant, you did something really good, you are a salesperson, you bring a lot of good sales. So we need to link your effort with the reward. That is really, really important. Uh, this is how we uh, see if you see the small kids in the home, uh, when you give them a reward, like even a candy or a balloon, for example, they are very happy, excited, you know, and um, yeah, it's like you made their day. So this is a human nature since childhood till the old. When you get gifts, when you get appreciation, when you get rewards, you feel excited, motivated, happy, associated with the organization. So always reward systems are very, very important. And of course, you have to see the cost of internal controls. Um, it's like I can buy SAP, Oracle, and a couple of other softwares. Uh, but if the cost I'm spending and the benefit I'm getting is less, then uh, I can't do that because cost benefit analysis is really, really important. So always we have to make sure that what we are doing, the cost and benefit. So there are so many type of controls we have to see in a company, no matter which department you work. These are the controls for every department. One is preventive controls. So we say that prevention is better than cure. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, if it is too cold outside, so wear your gloves, your jacket and a cap and uh, then go out so you will not get sick. So you did a prevention and it brings you some good results. Same way in companies, we do the same. Before I hire an employee, I should have an employee hiring policy. I should have an employee firing policy. I should have an employee promotion policy. I should have all the aspects covered in a HR policy because this will prevent us from unnecessary problems related to an employment because employee can blame you. They can tell you that you are not organized and you don't told, you don't tell me before and that's not the way it works. So these are, you know, few things, prevention, preventive, so we bought, we bought some locks and doors, uh, we buy some softwares, we put a preventive controls before we hire the staff. Then we have detective controls. So if you have a very nice laptop, we will install what? We will install an antivirus. This antivirus, when in a very beautiful laptop, even it is $5,000, you will get a virus. So if you don't have antivirus, who will catch the virus and kill it or quarantine it? Um, you need uh, to have detective control, which is antivirus is an example. So same way in companies, we have a very nice camera. Uh, we have a lock door. We have, it opens with your thumbnails. But um, maybe someone cheated with the system, put another thumb impression for someone else. And now you are going in his place. Uh, they are, you know, human mind is very, very cheeky. So we need to work hard on detective control so people cannot play around with our systems in the company. Obviously, we need directive control. So say, for example, your bosses in your company one day will tell you, look, do go and do CMA. Maybe he's himself a CMA, understand the value of study and um, uh, understand. So he will give you a direct. 